The Allies' initial naval bombardment was only a partial success, and many German gun batteries survived. Despite this, hundreds of landing craft carrying tens of thousands of soldiers continued to make their way towards the shore. Just ahead of them, though, the Allies were about to reveal their biggest surprise. At 6.25 a.m. on D-Day, vessels emerged from the water that were unlike anything ever used in the history of warfare. These were duplex drives, tanks that swam, This is one of the very few duplex drives to survive the Second World War. This strange tank was developed after a national humiliation two years earlier. The 1942 Allied raid on Dieppe had been a costly failure, partly due to a lack of supporting firepower. The strategy at D-Day would be very different. The idea was that you would have tanks coming up the beach along with the very first wave of infantry, which meant, of course, that the tanks themselves had to be amphibious. It took considerable ingenuity to come up with a tank that could make its own way ashore. An inventor named Nicholas Straussler believed he had the answer. His company built both collapsible boats and armored vehicles. Straussler built a prototype by adapting a Valentine tank, the workhorse of the British North Africa campaign. His creation was given the name Duplex Drive, DD for short, because it could be powered by the dual methods of propellers or tracks. The tank had to fit on a landing craft, so any flotation device had to be compact. Straussler came up with an ingenious screen. The screen? It's attached to the hull, and below the screen, the hull is made waterproof with various mastic-type materials. It's inflated with compressed air. These become rigid, lift the frames, and the canvas acts as a barrier to the water, and the machine floats with the top of the turret just about level with the water surface. When you're afloat, you have that extension pipe which blows the smoke out from the screen. There's a drain here, runs down to the rear of the tank, and any water that uh, comes inside the screen eventually goes down, goes to the rear where there's a bilge pump. The driver is the one who really needs to be courageous because he's down inside the hole, under the water surface. He's the one who's going to go down in the vehicle if it sinks. There was additional danger for the driver. If the tank made it to shore, the screen blocked his view. Again, the designers had a solution. There's a small but vital fitting here, which has got a rubber bulb on the inside, which the driver can see. And when this is in water, that bulb is inflated like a balloon. When the water level drops below there, the, the bulb deflates, and the driver knows that he's then sufficiently on dry land to drop the screen 